Welcome to Just a Minute. Thank you. Hello, my name is Nicholas Parsons, and as the minute waltz fades away, once more it's my huge pleasure to welcome our many listeners in this country and around the world, but also to welcome to the program this week four delightful, talented, and humorous individuals who are going to play this amazing game. And they are seated on my right, Paul Merton and Kit Hesketh Harvey, and seated on my left, Giles Brandreth and Shappy Corsandi. Would you please welcome all four of them? As usual, I'm going to ask them to speak on the subject that I will give them, and they will try and do that without hesitation, repetition, or deviation. Uh, beside me sits Sarah Sharp. She's going to help me with a score. She'll blow a whistle when the 60 seconds have elapsed. And let's begin the show with Paul Merton. Paul, a subject here we'd love to hear about. My hidden talent. 60 seconds, starting <laughs> now. I'm a born mimic. This is Alec Guinness in the film Kind Hearts to Coronets. My dear sir, the view from the west window has all the exuberance of Chaucer, with none of the concomitant goodities of the period. <laughs> oh, where uh, is challenged? This isn't a hidden talent, it's an explicit and brilliant talent which we're all enjoying. <laughs> Deviation, the man is a genius at mimicry. <laughs> Can I just point out to the listeners at home, that was also me just then. <laughs> <laughs> well, that deserves a bonus point, that last remark of Lord Paul. What is your challenge? That it was deviation from what's on the card, which is my hidden talent. He was showing us one of his obvious talents. That's a clever challenge, isn't it, John? Mm, yeah. <laughs> so we give you... <laughs> give you a point for a correct challenge, of course. You keep the take over the subject, and there are um, 47 seconds available. My hidden talent starting now. I had a French mistress at school. It was unusual for a boy of 14 to keep a woman, <laughs> let alone a foreigner. But my hidden talent is as a Lothario. As a lover, I am beyond compare. Subtle, supple, beautiful in all that I do. The delicacy of my lovemaking is something that is unknown. Oh, challenge. I, I just panicked. I thought, <laughs> he must be stopped. <laughs> this is not a hidden talent. He's got illegitimate children all over London. <laughs> Uh, but on the, the same basis that he had you on the thing that you didn't hide your talent, you expressed it, yeah, I gave that decision to him, I can give it to you now and say Ooh. he didn't hide his talent, no, he, he didn't. expressed it all, didn't yeah, exactly. he? Exactly. Yeah. But we're on the horns of a dilemma here, as soon as we reveal was... anything. <laughs> may, I, may I just say, at that point, uh, while Giles was speaking, I was very conscious of the fact that I was the only woman on the panel mm. that's playing the game, and it was very difficult for me to I resist know. buzzing to I say, know. liar. No! <laughs> I resisted. Can I say, you can't resist buzzing when you're with me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my Lord, I used to have your book when I was a kid. <laughs> Oh, yes, yes, indeed. I'm sure your analyst has been through it with you. <laughs> <laughs> Don't Shappy, worry, Shappy. We... Nicholas has been on the game for years and years. And years. <laughs> I know. Shappy, we're going to give you a bonus point because we enjoyed what you just said. Paul, you got a point because it was an incorrect challenge and you take over the subject and it's my hidden talent and there are 29 seconds starting now. My hidden talent is mime. Have a look at this. What <laughs> <laughs> Giles, you challenged. Hesitation, this is a word game, not television. Mm. <laughs> I've been misinformed. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be hair washed for this. <laughs> well, I thought it was a hidden talent because it's mime on radio, so therefore it's hidden, so I would have thought that would have been all right. Yeah. 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 Paul, Paul's the only one who's this actually is, This practiced, is going to be the clever, clever edition yeah, of Giles. Yeah, getting very metaphysical. <laughs> uh -huh. So, uh, uh, Paul, right, we'll give you a bonus point for what you just said. Giles, you had a correct challenge. 25 seconds, my hidden talent, starting now. The Swiss kiss is a French one through which you yodel. Uh, Paul, challenge. A repetition of French. We had French mistress. We had before. before. Your French yes, mistress. Yes, you did have a French mistress. Excuse me, audience, those are the rules. Well, <laughs> uh, Paul. Well, listen, you picked up correctly. 22 seconds available. Another point to you, of course. My hidden talent, starting now. I dig tunnels under London. I've been doing this now for about 35 years. One of them was so successful, it was eventually turned into an extension of the Jubilee line. <laughs> and 
I feel that this talent of mine is greatly hidden because what I do, I start inside my house. I dig down... Uh, Kit said... Uh, it was dig. Yes, yes, you do dig. too much digging Dig, 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 dig the yes. whole day through, didn't so, they? So, Kit, you got in with six seconds ago. Oh, Tell us something about my hidden talent starting now. Gordon Brown promised us a government of all the talents. He didn't say that they would be so hidden as to be virtually <laughs> undetectable. <laughs> In this game, whoever is speaking as the whistle goes gains an extra point. It was uh, Kit Keskathabi then. He's got two points, so is Giles. Chappie's got one, Paul's got four. Uh, Giles, will you begin the next round? The subject, foul play. 60 seconds, starting now. I was a member of Parliament, but I want to make it absolutely clear to this audience that I am no longer an MP. And when I was, I dug my own moat and my wife paid for her own videos. <laughs> the foul play that a month or two ago was exposed in the Palace of Westminster has shocked me to the core. Floating duck ponds. Not foul play there, because, of course, they're quacking creatures. I suppose I have to ask what has happened to the mother of all parties. It is a tragic... Uh, kit challenge. Oh, uh, Parliament. Parliament. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, yes, I beg your pardon. It's a singular... Mm -hmm. Explain to the listeners. hoist by my own He said Parliament the first time, Member of Parliament, and now he's Mother of All Parliaments. Mm. So it's, a, it's a little trick they play in just a minute, and <laughs> Kit didn't Fell spot straight it. into the so moat. Yeah. Incorrect <laughs> challenge. Uh, Giles, you still have the subject. 32 seconds. Foul play starting now. Is chicken soup with barley a foul play, I ask myself, a piece by Arnold Wesker? Let me return to the true elements of foul play that has been exposed in our society in recent months. A shocking devastation of corrupt people, snouts in the trough, abusing the taxpayer, behaving as though they were members of the House of Lords. <laughs> <laughs> we got House that time. Yeah, Kit, you, you challenge, yes? House that he time. He repeated House. No, no, house, no. Of, house of Parliament. No, he said... No, House of Parliament. Oh, I've done this again. House of Parliament. <laughs> Now, the House of Lords. I'm so he's, sorry. He's not a, he's, don't apologise, darling. We'd love to hear from you. The, um, <laughs> but it was an incorrect challenge. Giles, another point. Foul play is still with you, Giles. Uh, 11 seconds, starting now. Oh, Calcutta was a foul play, but I rather enjoyed it because, given my hidden talent as a sort of secret Lothario, when you go to something that's oh, randy uh, and amusing... Uh, chappy, chappy. I'm sorry, just as I buzzed, I realised that uh, I the talking. rules... Yes, I did realise you were talking. That's the effect I had. And <laughs> also, I remembered the rules of the game. <laughs> because I was going to pick you up on Lothario, but you said that in a completely different um, bit. That's right. Yeah. Yes, I just wanted to clarify that in case right. anyone. Well, it's thought... lovely to hear from you. Jeffy. Thank you. Uh, but it was an incorrect challenge. So yes, Giles yes. has another point, and three seconds. Foul play starting now. Foul play is among the most horrific things in the world. <laughs> So Giles Brandis started with that subject and, in spite of many interruptions, finished with the subject. So he got points throughout the round and winners won for speaking as the whistle went. So he's now in the lead ahead of Paul Merton and Kit Hesketh Harvey and Shappy Scorsandi in that order. Shappy, will you begin the next round? <clears throat> the subject, mummies. Will you tell us something about mummies in this game starting now? Yes, the mummies I'm going to talk about are the mummies that aren't always wrapped up head to toe and in a big box called a sarcophagus, I think. The mummies I'm going to talk about are the ones that I have... Uh, poor talk. challenge. I talk. It was the exp I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk repeated. about the mummies. Oh, I'm, I'm so about. sorry. Don't apologise, darling. Oh, but oh, I feel right. dreadful. I feel like I've let myself down and, and <laughs> most of all, let the government down, I feel. <laughs> no, I don't think anybody could do that. <laughs> 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 so, uh, a correct challenge, Paul, and you have 50 seconds on mummies starting now. The 1932 film starring Boris Karloff called The Mummy sort of <laughs> typified the extent of how Hollywood looked towards these creatures. Egyptian and originally, and they were wrapped up in these bandages. As a monster, mm. it's not particularly effective because it moves very slowly. And what you want from somebody who's out to kill you, like Dracula or somebody who's hired by the craze... Uh, kit challenge. There are two somebodies, I'm afraid. Oh, two yes, somebodies, yes, so yes. Sorry, yes. Yeah. Somebody's out to kill you, or somebody like, right? Yep. So, Kit, that time you were right. At last. Not a single in the plural. <laughs> 31 seconds on mummies, starting now. It's an amazing image, Howard Carter and Lord Carnarvon rolling aside the stone, peering in as the light shifts and hits a peculiar corpse. <laughs> Giles. <laughs> Hesitation. 
Well, no, I think he was struggling a bit. Yeah, well, and it's, 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 it was a bit of a slip on the word, but I don't think it's enough to be called hesitation. Huh? You have the benefit of the doubt, Kit. Another point, 23 seconds, mummies starting now. I see wonderful things, and through the motes of dust uprises Nicholas Parsons. <laughs> uh, Giles, you're challenged. Crawling combined with oncoming hesitation. <laughs> <laughs> on Oncoming hesitation? <laughs> That's good, good one. You've That's tried it. that in your time, Paul. Don't tell me you haven't. <laughs> uh, yes. A Lothario speech. I can't give you a point for, for crawling. No. Uh, but, no. Uh, no. But the one thing I was crawling, I was being did. rather rude about you, actually. <laughs> it, it was, was. The, the opposite of crawling, surely. It was just galloping. I, we don't know what you were going to say, because it was ongoing. Right. Mm. Paul, uh, Giles, uh, yes. hesitation, no. a point to you. Uh, 16 seconds, mummies starting now. I wish to speak of yummy mummies. In Kensington, where I live, a crash is what happens when two cars collide. Uh, Paul Chow. Is nobody safe? <laughs> <laughs> From Giles' erotic ambitions... Or are you conveying that, that all these yummy mummies were a result of him? Well, we know where he's going with this, where he's going with everything else. <laughs> but there's a nuclear explosion tomorrow, and there's one man left to populate the planet. Let it be Giles! <laughs> yes! <laughs> oh, yes! So, when you get to my age, you'll feel like this too, Paul. <laughs> and within, Look the at rules, within the rules of just a minute, do you have a challenge? Uh, yes, I can't remember what it was, though. Uh, no. <laughs> no, I haven't, no, I haven't. You no. no, you'll get a bonus point for your interruption, because you've got a wonderful reaction. Giles, you weren't interrupted, so you get a point. You still have uh, 11 seconds. Tell us something more about mummies starting now. Sex is what these mummies have their potatoes delivered in. They are charming people, very elegant, and they have their little push chairs in which little children call Basil. Um, Kit Challenge. Oh, two little, little yeah. push chairs and little, little children. Yes. Yes. Little Nasty. push chairs and little things. Yes, yes. Damn uh, But blast. Kit, you cleverly got in with two seconds to oh, go. Goodness. And it's still mummies starting now. They've had their brains surgically removed through their noses. <laughs> So, Kit Hesketh Harvey, speaking then as the whistle when gained the next point. He's now moved forward. He's equal with Paul in second place, just behind Giles, and then comes Shappy Cassandi. And, Kit, it's your turn to begin. The subject now is gap years. <laughs> I imagine yours were quite a few years ago. <laughs> we're looking at the audience. We think there's quite a few gap years in the front here, actually. <laughs> Anyway, 60 seconds as usual. Gap years, Kit, starting now. This is very serendipitous. Only yesterday I was at Terminal 4 at Heathrow to greet my son back from his gap year. A gap year is called that because you tour third world countries and see where cheap chain store clothing is made. <laughs> you then go to a beach in Thailand where you're so stoned your memory has an enormous gap in it. You don't know whether you're in Crappy or Phuket or Pee Pee or Poo. Uh, <laughs> P repetition. <laughs> oh no, no. You might as well say Addis Ababa is a repetition of Bubba. <laughs> it's spelled all as one word. Oh, is it? Yes. Is, I it, is no it an idea. actual place? Oh, like, yeah. oh yes. Oh, yeah. oh, I knew place. that. It's and... got nothing to do with your life. <laughs> and I knew that Timbuktu was a real place. Mm, that's right. Yes. <laughs> I didn't know that till I was 26. <laughs> <laughs> So, an incorrect challenge, and uh, you still keep the subject, uh, Kit, and you have 37 seconds. Gapio's starting now. In the grand old days of the tour, when... when uh, uh, <laughs> Giles, Crash you got in first. Yes. Hesitation. That Sorry. was a hesitation, yes. Don't say it as if you were demanding it, just... <laughs> What's wrong with you today, eh? Giles? Can you not inquire of the chairman? <laughs> would you interpret that as hesitation? Oh, yes. I'm so sorry. Yes, is that sorry. the way it's done? I'm so sorry. Yeah, yes, it My is. suggestion would be that there was some hesitation. <laughs> <laughs> and I would agree with you, Giles. Thank yes. you. It's a nice to have it in a civilised way, isn't it? Right. <laughs> Charles, 33 seconds, gap years, starting now. Mine was rather a sad gap year. I spent it at home in London, living with my parents in a block of flats called Chilton Court above Baker Street Tube Station. Next door in that apartment was Huey Green. Indeed, if opportunity had knocked at a different address, I might have ended up as Peaches Geldof's great uncle. <laughs> well, this wonderful toastmaster and host of television programmes had a train set. Uh, Kit Challenge. Are we a long way from a gap? No. Yeah. I want to tell you that my gap year was spent mm. with Huey Green playing with his train set. 
I think we did establish, and I'm giving the benefit of the doubt yes, to okay. Giles. No, that's I gave the benefit that's of the doubt to you last time, now to Giles. Uh, 12 seconds, Giles. Gap years starting now. It is a pathetic thing to be alone in the capital of the British Empire when all around you are other students of the uh, same age. Chappy challenged. It's, there's no empire anymore. No, but this is a long time ago. I'm talking about my gap year. There was an empire. Oh, yes. OK. Oh, yes, in those days there was. I, 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 I kind of didn't empire. have to there tell a, you. <laughs> yeah, there was an empire, there was, was a king, a there was a, you know, king empress. So. I've always wanted to ask you something, Giles. Yeah, you can. Oh, was... triple seven three one two. <laughs> <laughs> You'll find it in the more select phone boxes. <laughs> Uh, Shappy, what was your challenge when the rules were just made? Oh, right. The, uh, my challenge was that he said the capital of the British Empire, I and know, I said and it the, is his mother. And I think there. the empire did exist. It when did exist. Did, when he was wow. There. Mm, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I yeah. never have thought to look at you. I know. I know. That's very sweet as well. But what I wanted to ask you was was the character of Stewie in Family Guy based on you? <laughs> Well, that's a visual question, really, and, uh, and on television, radio doesn't come over very well, but we'll say, no, it wasn't, and uh, give you a bonus point because we enjoyed your interruption. But Giles has a point, and uh, six seconds on gap years starting up. The kit that you have to wear includes a rucksack and curious jeans that are frayed around the edge as you set off from Victoria <laughs> Station. Right, so uh, Giles is steaming ahead. He said he only had three hours sleep last night. He works best on that, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. uh, and, <clears throat> and he's got another point, of course, speaking of the whistle. Went with other points. He's increased his lead, in other words. And uh, back, back with you, Paul. We'd like you to begin the next round. The subject, thick and fast. Who are we talking <laughs> about? <laughs> well, the fast applies to Giles, but the thick doesn't. But anyway, uh, <laughs> a thick and fast is a subject, Paul, 60 seconds, starting now. Professional footballers. <laughs> thick and fast. <laughs> if we look at them, because at the age of seven they start playing this particular game and they're not interested in other aspects of life. And if they do succeed and end up playing for a top team, then every aspect of their existence is looked after. They don't contain their whole passports about them. They are told to go here and also uh, mentioned over there. <laughs> <laughs> Kit, your challenge first. Uh, very good, but there was a bit of a hes hesitation, there was a hesitation, I'm afraid. He so, was Kit, you got fast. Of just a minute. You, sorry, thick and fast, 38 seconds starting now. I always think that the audience at Top Gear is pretty thick and fast. You look at Jeremy Clarkson and the man with lots of hair and the little one who looks like a hamster with the big lemur eyes, and you wonder why these people every week just go round and round. Oh! Uh. <laughs> Right, Giles. Is there the possibility that we heard round and then the word repeated? Yes, again it, was, <laughs> it was an oncoming hesitation. <laughs> yeah. round and, and then he it hesitated. It could have been round about. And I then pointed out he was about to say round and round and then came a hesitation. No, no, what I tried actually to say happened it was, Giles. Uh, <laughs> I tried to say it as politely as I could, but my patience was wearing a bit thin. His intention was to repeat. But he didn't no. repeat, and the whistle went before he actually repeated. Mm. That's the contention I'm making, mm. and I was listening very acutely, <laughs> so I'm giving the benefit of the doubt again to you, Kit. How very kind. And say you. that you've got 23 Civility seconds. does pay, doesn't it? Mm. <laughs> thick and fast, starting now. Jody Marsh, I think, is very thick and fast, and I have high hopes of Paris Hilton, although I've never actually met her. But Peter Andre, the male version of the species, is discovering you cross the Jordan and you're out as fast as you can say Pickfords. <laughs> <laughs> Charles, right. I that hesitate was. to say this, but I sense there was hesitation. There was a definite hesitation. <laughs> so thick and fast with you, Giles. Correct challenge. Eight seconds starting now. Thick and fast, a wonderful double act. Great vaudevillians from the golden age of music hall. Fast and thick is how they were correctly known. And <laughs> <laughs> So Giles is on a roll here. He's got more points, and including speaking for one as the whistle went, and has increased his lead. And it's Kit Hesketh Harvey in second place, then Paul Merton, and then Shappy Kosandi. And Shappy Kosandi, it is your turn to begin. This subject should have gone to Giles. Anger management. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, will you start talking on anger management, Shappy, starting now? A woman got on the tube yesterday with me, and it was a very crowded carriage, and she was very, very... Oh, oh. Oh! That's I'm now very angry, and I need some management. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, so, uh, Giles, 54 seconds, uh, anger management, starting now. Um, this is the Buddhist way! Well, 
chef, are you challenged? Sorry, that's not a word. Yes, it is. It I, is. I'm I realised, uh, yeah, if, it's, if it's in, pure in, Buddhist. Yes, in, in do-it-yourself Buddhism, it's almost <laughs> the first word. Um, okay. uh, uh, Shappy, there was a repetition. Mm, yes, no, I thought so. Uh, yes. I, thought, I thought that... It was that a, it's a single sound. I once met a Buddhist, and it's an octave lower. <laughs> The Buddhist I met arrived on a bicycle. Mm. <laughs> Shappy, I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt and say, right, correct challenge. <laughs> and 52 seconds, tell us, get, take up your story now, gird your loins, as they say, and go into anger management. And 52 seconds, starting now. When I met a very angry person, I... Uh, Paul challenge. Well, you deliberately said very again. I did. Oh, yes. Oh, you know... Paul, a correct challenge. 49 seconds. Tell us something about anger management starting now. In this day and age, it is very easy to get wound up by the vicissitudes of society. <laughs> Why, I was only travelling on public transport the other day, <laughs> and I looked around at my fellow passengers, and I could see that a lot of them were, were experiencing... Uh, kid challenge. A uh, repetition of work. The... Oh, yes, he did say whoa, whoa, that's right. Uh, 35 seconds, anger management's with you, Kit, starting now. Somebody once said it's practically impossible to feel anger whilst looking at a penguin. So I suggest <laughs> we all decamp from here, Giles in uh, particular, and, and go to Regent's Park. Well, say you're a penguin. Yes. Mm. And I'm another penguin. <laughs> yes. And you're on my patch, mm. and I look at you and I go, like that. I'm just, this, this, you know, I, I'm, I'm getting angry at a penguin. That's, that's the hole in the argument, which I hadn't foreseen. You're quite right. Yeah. I don't know if it applies to other penguins. <laughs> I think they were talking about people. Oh, but you weren't penguins. sure, but I wasn't clear. No, I should that, have made that clear. I mean, you saw right. myself as a penguin, seeing yeah. you as a, a king penguin. Mm. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah. An emperor, possibly. Well, let's not go too far. <laughs> <laughs> the emperor is sitting over there, I think you'll find, anyway. <laughs> Kit, 26 seconds for you. Anger management starting now. Like Dusty Springfield, I close my eyes and count to ten and think of Marcus Aurelius, who said that the consequences of anger are so much worse than the causes. This is an educational thought, and I'm turning back into the vicar now, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> Shappy challenge. You turned back into the vicar. Yeah, yes. I did. And that was a hesitation. Right. The Shappy, 12 seconds. Tell us something more. And don't say very this no, time. No, I won't. I? I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to say anything, and that, then I'll win. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Anger management, 12 seconds, starting now. When someone was shouting at me very... <laughs> ah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a syndrome. It's a syndrome. <laughs> Right. Who goes first? I, I, Kit, Kit your, your light came on first. No, it didn't. Paul. No, it was no, Paul. It Paul's yeah, just... it was, uh, unfortunately... Um... <laughs> yeah. what? What? If the subject was very, it'd be really good. <laughs> Paul, you had a correct challenge. Yes. Nine seconds. Anger management starting now. Very verys are the very... <laughs> uh... <laughs> you said very verys, didn't you? I did. You did, right. And Giles has got very sharp ears, but picked up... It before you got to the S. Right, um, the, uh, it's a third correct, incorrect challenge. Paul, another point to you. Seven seconds, anger management, starting now. I've got a photograph of Giles Brand in my living room, which I punch, and it gets rid of my anger management. I feel fantastic. I love him, of course. <laughs> So, as we move into the final round, let me tell you that Giles is still in the lead. He's about three ahead of Paul Merton, and he's about four ahead of Kit Hesketh Harvey, and he's about five or six ahead of Shappy Cassandi. Uh, so, Kit, it's your turn to begin. <coughs> so, you start with now, tell us something about the Tate. 60 seconds starting now. Rather like the television series The Apprentice, it's founded on sugar. There was a Victorian philanthropist who endowed a palace on the north bank of the Thames and filled it with contemporary art. Curiously enough, my bottom is hanging in the tape. This is gospel truth. While I was a very calipiginous <laughs> student at university, a photographer came and made an installation of my naked bottom, which was rapidly... Um... I've said bottom twice, haven't I? <laughs> There are and two cheeks. Does yeah. that count? Yeah. Yeah. There was a repetition of bottom. Yes, there was, was a bottom. Yes, there was a bottom. Uh, but Paul's light came on a fraction before yours. Because they, they were in, in, infinitesimal. They almost... Uh, yours I, caught up. Just... I thought you'd pulled out the plug. I understand. It's fine. <laughs> Can it's you see the light? It's a temptation. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> Paul, you have uh, 37 seconds on the Tate starting now. The Tate. What a magnificent building nestling by the banks of the River Thames. I saw a magnol. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> that was the Charles. name of the exhibitor. <laughs> Norwegian artist. I've described that as hesitation. Yes, right, you were correct. Morgan Roy is a Norwegian artist. He's <laughs> one of the great 21st century installation artists. <laughs> Morgan Roy, you never heard of him? <laughs> no, we haven't, and nor the rest of the audience. Well, you... <laughs> Anybody heard of him? Yes. Somebody said yes. 
<laughs> They'll say anything to get you, Paul. Right. Uh, Giles, uh, correct challenge. 31 seconds. The Tate starting now. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're wondering why I am here, then already we have something in common. My presence is accounted for by the fact that I am the world authority on the Tate Gallery. This comes as a result of knowing the great-granddaughter, Harriet Tate, of the Founders' Line. She was known as Hattie Tate. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I've done it again. It's turning into a pattern. I was That's almost right, yes. obsessive. You thought he repeated Tate and it's on oh, the... Oh, no, I thought he repeated no and known. Oh, right, yes. you're right, yes, all these things. Giles, 13 seconds. The Tate, starting now. On the first floor of the Tate Gallery, you find... Uh, Paul Challenge. Repetition of gallery. Well done. You mentioned, you mentioned the gallery before. <laughs> I should explain to our listeners I got a look of absolute disdain and despair from Giles. <laughs> As if to say, how dare you? <laughs> well, I have to dare on occasions. You do, don't you? Yeah, that's right. And, uh, Paul, ten seconds. Tell us something more about the Tate, starting now. I walked around this huge, cavernous hall. Um, Giles Challenge. Earlier he referred to the building as being a huge one on the South Bank. That's right. Did mm -hmm. I? It's yep. a huge repetition of repetition huge. Repetition of huge, rather <laughs> as though it was a repetition of gallery. <laughs> <laughs> a feeling if you didn't win today's show you might kill yourself <laughs> <laughs> and I, I couldn't have that on my hands <laughs> no so he has seven seconds to tell us something about the Tate starting now my favorite painter is <laughs> hesitation I'm afraid yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> For the look of death, wasn't it? <laughs> well, I think I'm not the only one, surely. <laughs> <laughs> There's a gang of us in the car park. <laughs> <laughs> it's an incorrect challenge, Giles. Here, another point in six seconds, starting now. The pre Raphaelites are among the most remarkable artists whose collection of work is now symbolised. <laughs> <laughs> I said that was to be the last round, and uh, it's finished up, I think you'll probably guess. Uh, Shappy came in, in a magnificent fourth place. She really did. She was... Yeah. There you are. <laughs> she hasn't played the game as much as the others, but her contribution was invaluable and charming and sexy as well. Oh, and, my uh, God! <laughs> and uh, in third place was Kit Heskis Harvey, who was less sexy, and... Uh, <laughs> and Paul Merton, there was, a, there was a touch of sex in there. I mean, Paul, <laughs> What's he going to say about Giles? <laughs> well, Giles emphasised sex all through his, uh, <laughs> his speeches, and he came out on top with more points than anyone else. <laughs> That's a great contribution. And it remains to say thank you to these four fine players of the game, Paul Merton, Kit, Hesketh, Harvey, Giles Brandreth and Shappy Corsandi. I think Sarah Sharp, who's helped me with the score, kept blown her whistle so elegantly when the 60 seconds went up. We thank our producer, Claire Jones. We're indebted to Ian Messiter, who created this amazing game. And we're very grateful to this lovely audience here in the Radio Theatre who've cheered us on our way. So from the audience, from me, Nicholas Parsons, and the team, tune in the next time we play Just a Minute. <laughs> Next week's Just a Minute, or Jam from the Archives, will be from October 2009, when Nicholas Parsons' 60-second challenges go out to Paul Merton, Stephen Fry, Charles Collingwood and Jenny Eclair.